Good afternoon, everyone. So you can hear my voice and see the screen, right? You can start. Thank you. We're going to talk about on this tutorial what are the use of hugging face. By now, I think all of you are familiar how you can draw data as its models from hugging face, but we're going to see other additional functionalities hugging face provides. So if we start uh, from the introduction part, well, hugging face is a company an open source community that specializes in NLP and machine learning projects. Uh, they are known for their contribu contribution in the field of NLP. Uh, they have developed various number of tools, libraries, resources that make for developers around the world to work with NLP model much better. So they provide a community source building products for advanced deep learning applications, which uh, we have been using those resources so far. So it's a central repository, like they had the structure if you see it has similarity with GitHub also. So uh, they have uh, GitHub like repository for models, data sets, documentation that help users to reuse artifacts, build their use cases, or cases or hugging friends found on the hackingbase.com uh, particular website. So what are the key aspects that are included in Hugging Face website uh, or with Hugging Face? Uh, the Hugging Face are the first one is the Hugging Face Transformer Library, which uh, do a lot of things. And the same, they have like architectures like RGBT who are built on the Transformers Library, Roberta and more. Uh, you can access from the hacking page. So transformers really uh, is one of the tools that are found on the hacking page that you can use for different uh, models functionalities. There is a model hub where com a collection of models are found where you also can push your own model there for everyone to be used. There are tokenizers that you can access there's a pipeline function on the face give for uh, accessing pre-trained modules and use them for different purposes. It just makes uh, loading a module easier the pipeline part. It, it does a lot of work behind the scenes that it can make the user interaction with models much easier, which we will see demo later. And as always, there is a community and collaboration like as it is in most websites where developers can share their work, interact, researchers to, uh, in LP interest can communicate. So it has a very active contributors in the website. So these are the key aspects that you can find from Hugging Face. Uh, what the common things that we can access, one is the data set. You can also access the data set functionality through the API. So you can access all the, you can access it by through the library data set where you can load by just calling the name of the data set from Hugging Face, you can load it, but also you can access the REST APIs. The REST APIs are found for data set for modules, and you can do that. There's also a link to accessing data set through the REST API, which you can check out. It's really easy. The documentation has an example, so how you can do that. So you're just calling some REST end API. Uh, it works fine. You can search on it, word, uh, give it a full statics about the data, access the data, data files, whatever you want. You can access the data set uh, through the API as well. The other uh, cool function they have is the inference APIs. Uh, the inference API in Hugging Face refers to an API that allows you to make predictions, perform inference using pre-trained language model hosted by Hacking Base. Using this API, you can access models, pre-trained models. Uh, you can perform your inference on those models. So uh, it enables you to send text input to these models and receive an output. Uh, with the inference API, you can leverage the power of state of art, 
language models without having to handle the model deployment. So if there is already a deployed or a pre-trained model on the hybrid phase, uh, Inference APIs give you the option without loading a particular model to test that model by passing an input, it throws an output. So we will see a demo on this one, but that is what they are doing. It makes testing models, seeing how the model work much easier without having to download that model. It abstracts away the complex of hosting, serving models, allowing to focus on utilizing the model for you in a lot tasks. So what are in the points? How can you, you can have on inference API? There's a link which you can look for. Uh, the pipeline part I just mentioned before. So hugging face pipelines allow you to use powerful language models for various tasks without needing to understand the complex technical detail. So you simply tell them what you need, they will handle the rest. So behind the scene, how our pipelines are doing is when they accept your data from an input, they tokenize it uh, to subword or words, depending on which model you're using, and they feed that to the model and transfer the, the output from the model to the user. So they will do this whole task that we usually that usually happen when you pass a data to a model. This is the steps you will do, right? You will tokenize and the model will answer because the model only understand a user question once it's changed to a number format. It doesn't actually understand our raw data. So this is the whole the whole process can be done by pipeline functionalities that the user doesn't, doesn't have to see that. They just have to pass only the model and access the pipeline functionality. The pipeline do the those parts by itself and return a response. So this is for for someone who is not who doesn't care about the behind work. Pipeline can be perfect to this new models and see outputs. So uh, this is a presentation. Let's just go to the demo on this concept that I just mentioned. What they can do. So if we start from the inference API, let's first go to a hugging face model, maybe. For example, if we see this particular model, maybe uh, we can see the inference API functionality after we pushed uh, a model on hugging face first. Let's just push a new model. Uh, so forget about the model part, that's not the space for us. Anyway, this, there's a model that I'm running here that does some functionality, but if I want to push it, I will identify as a parameter like this. You can see this push to help parameter. On your model, you have to set it true when you decide to push your model your, after you've done work on hugging test. You need an account, an account when you push a data set, a model, on hugging face, uh, which I have one, you can sign up and have one. So I have said the true part, I'm just giving here an ID. Then I have run my model like this, I have set all the parameters. Now, if you want to push your model to uh, the hugging face, all you have to do is put your user name, which is this one for me, and your model name, model name. So this one, this is push a, the variable that I assigned for my model above. Now, if I run this one, you will push my model data, everything that is needed, and will provide me the link to access my new model in my account. So the push to have functionality will do the job with this. It gives me the link to my new model or three model learning. So I just click that. This is my new model. So when you push it like this, by default, it will set you up like a readme, your model card. If you want to edit, which you can do that here, like this here. And if you want to set uh, your own inference API for your model, this one is already by default 
set up a model for a different API uh, user interface like this for me, which I can test this model. I'll just compute. If it works, you will see the answer here. But if this uh, particular thing wasn't exist uh, on your model, you can also create it. So on this on the replay part, you have option for spaces. So these spaces gives you a user interface option. So all you have to do is just create new space. It will automatically understand the model and create its own user uh, inputs interaction user interface that you can access there. So let's just create new space. So I have options to create a radio front end or a stream lead or rocker or static since we know these two. Let's just stick to with these two. So I pick radio on map.py. Uh, there is this default uh, code. Just let, let's just make it public and create space. Done. Let's just uh, see another model here in the meantime. Let's say, for example, this one. Let me start on the model. Now, if I want to access this model without downloading it to my machine and to try to rest it out, I can do test it like this here, but I can also access the end point. Before that, let's just see the end of this one. It created this uh, this uh, small user interface to interact with my model. So this is what you can do after you deploy your uh, model. You can create your own space user interface for your model. So users from the world can access your model. You don't have to do it to download it like this. So by default, it's already created, but sometimes it doesn't create it. So all you have to do is uh, go to the spaces part and make sure to create from this. Don't create from this one. This one, you will just create another user interface, user interface that's not connected with this one. But this one will directly create a user interface related to your model. Uh, if we go back to how we can access the phrase in the point, for this particular model, again, you will go to the deploy button here. You can see inference API service, that's right. Just click that one. And this is the end point um, for accessing the Mistra uh, model. So all you have to do is just copy this one. Uh, it will need a token, which you can find on your account. Here on your model, you can just go to settings. And there is access token option here, and this is your token. That's all you have to do. So, just if you want to test that here, for example, the Moodle Mr. module, which I already copied here, my token is there. Mm, let's just run it. So, if I want to see the Mr. module, I can also see it by this one. So, I ask it what kind of country is Russia without post information about Russia. So I can just throw the module without having to download them using the functionality of inference API. This is one functionality you can have um, when it comes to inference APIs. So the spaces are just user interface created by a lot of people. So if you want to create your own, again, the same thing like before, you can create your own stream lead, create your application and just push it like you will any GitHub project and it will push to this one. So the way it's actually similar with GitHub spaces will give that functionality. So what we have seen, we've seen how we can access inference APIs to access models and test them out. Uh, we have seen how you can push your own model to have you test and access it. Now we let's see how pipelines are used. So all you have to do is just import the pipeline functionality with this transform from the transformers library, then just call the pipeline. So this is it the default. There are default modules here. Uh, 
by just clicking text generation this like the state text to image image segmentation they are default but there are models which are not the default models you actually have to specify the name by saying model so for example for text generation yeah this one for text generation Yeah, all these models are can be used for text generation. So if I want particularly to run the Mistral uh, 7B model using pipeline, uh, I have to write here model. I have to name this model and write the Mistral name. This one, this part. I have to write that name and just run it, and the, pop, uh, the pipeline directly will get the model, and you can just pass your input. Now, let's just use the default model. I run the default uh, models that easily can be run without uh, be understand by the pipeline function without you having to specify by saying model. So pipeline text generation. Pipeline text generation, I find it, it's working. Now, let's just, I'm asking it here to finish up the sentence. Then this is a variable assigned for the pipeline. Just call that one and pass the input. I just started a sentence for it once upon a time. I'm asking it to finish. That is what XML does. And it finished the model, the work, by adding its own make like, a prediction of text like this. So easily you can test out models using the pipeline functionality without having to do the packing work, which is much easier. Here also you can identify a maximum length for your for the response to maximize to minimize the or maximize the token responses it will output the same thing okay so this is to the tutorial on hugging face i think it's clear but if you have any questions you're welcome to raise hand Uh, hello, sorry, I joined late, so I didn't get the difference between inference ABI and uh, the pipeline. Yeah, they, they, it's just different uh, ways of accessing uh, modules. Oh, okay, the they do the same thing. Actually, yeah, the inference use actual uh, endpoint API, but the pipeline doesn't use those things. It's just to do the backing work, whatever works. with their other questions is it clear i think it's a easy concept that i mentioned so it wouldn't be hard for you to get it uh kind of get reaction that you understood to this tutorial so you guys can go back to your work okay great